I'm Sarah Henshaw of the Jack Jackson Podcast. In each episode of Jack Jackson, you'll follow the adventures of 1950s private investigator Jack Jackson, along with your favorite recurring characters, his assistant Kitty, Peter the Landlord, the villainous Rube Goldberg, as well as new characters brought to life by our voice actors. Each episode delivers a new film noir mystery, accompanied by sound effects, historic events, and pop culture references. Some right, some not so right. And to recreate the style of an old-time radio program, we include a show sponsor and record each episode in the dark in front of an audience. It's a unique improv comedy experience with a touch of nostalgia that always delivers plenty of laughs. So sit back and get ready for another episode of Jack Jackson, in which Jack takes on his toughest case yet. Sponsored by Thompson's Tomato Case. Thompson's Tomato Case is thicker. <laughs> Tonight, Jack takes on his head in the Jack Jackson and the case of the Hidden Head Shrinkers. Sponsored by Thompson's Tomato Paste. Let's get saucy. <laughs> case like this, not in a real long time. A real serious case. I found myself in an upstate mansion, Northside Dark City. Young kid here with me, missing father. I walked around the place with my cigarette, kid leading me around, trying his best to tell me what was going on. Jackson, it's been... It's been a whole week since I've seen my daddy. <laughs> he was about 16, maybe 15 years old. He, uh, he had scruffy blonde hair, and he wore those kinds of clothes you buy for kids that need fancy clothes. <laughs> my dad used to take me to Walmart before I lost him. <laughs> you gotta help me find him, Jack. Prom's next week, and I don't know how to shave. <laughs> His name was Toby. Tobly, Toby Malarone. <laughs> the Malarone family were wealthy socialites around Dark City. They had inns with the mayor. All over town, they, they were known. The Malarones were uh, the tops of the tippy top. Yeah, girls make fun of my name, but you know, I'm okay with it. Listen, Toby... If we're going to find your dad, we're going to have to start looking real deep. We've looked all over the house and haven't found any sign of him. <laughs> yeah, I told you that when I, you know, was looking around my house. I looked there first. <laughs> <coughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit about your father? Why don't you start with his name? Well, his name is Roni. And uh, <laughs> last time I saw him was at this mansion. That's right. Roni Malrone. <laughs> <laughs> He's a doctor of sorts. He always likes experimenting. But honestly, he never kept me in on the... He never put me in the loop, you know? Well, don't worry, kid. We're gonna find him. We walked into his office and started poking around. It had been the second or third time we'd been in there. I couldn't remember. We looked around his bookshelves and on the table, looking for any sign of why he might have left. Oh, pardon me! I'm just cleaning in here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. It was an older woman. She wore a hairnet and carried a mop and bucket. Just, just, just cleaning this old mold out of the bookcases. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Anything I can do to make your life better, Toby? Patricia Malone. Her and, her and, uh, uh Roni went way back. So why don't you tell me again, Patricia, the last thing that, uh, that he said to you before he disappeared. Oh, well, he said, bye, Trisha, sweetie, I'm gonna go buy you a tart. <laughs> and then he left. And that was what day? I pulled out my notes and started scribbling things down. It was, um, I believe, Wednesday. My very wet notepad. <laughs> See, I, 
I always like to clean the bookcases on Wednesday, and today is Wednesday, which is why I'm cleaning the bookcases. Yes, of course. I have a fetish for cleaning, despite my high status. I heard a break somewhere else in the house. I looked. Ah! Hi, um, I'm really sorry. I was just trying to meet with Dr. Malarone. I have an appointment, I swear. It was another young man around his, uh, that, that kind of age where you get bumps in your face. <laughs> he came in and he, he scratched his neck and looked like he had something. I'm, I'm sorry I knocked over your statue out there. Is, I'm, I feel, oh, there goes another. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I just, I, I'm, I, I was trying to, to, to come to my... <laughs> That's when I recognized it. It was Clive. The boy from the, the store all those years ago. You yeah. could use a drink here. Well, if it isn't Clive, Clive, how are you, my boy? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Jackson. I really didn't want to see you. <laughs> Take the drink, Clivey boy. Oh, thank It'll you. It'll make you feel better. I... Oh, that's a manly gulp you got there, Clive. Well, I've had a lot of duties put on my young teenage mind and body. <laughs> oh, boy. It's I not, feel you there, man. For some reason, that makes me think of that great tomato paste. Oh, Thompson's <laughs> tomato paste, yeah. Instant seller. As soon as we open in the morning, there's a line out the door, and it's gone before noon. I love Thompson's tomato paste. It makes a good cleaning agent as well. It's really thick. <laughs> so thick. Ah, oh, Thompson's tomato paste. That thick is ridiculous. <laughs> It was Peterson, their butler. Ah, oh. oh, Toby, I think it's time for your horseback lesson in about five minutes. Well, I think we're all done. What? I'm sorry, is, is Dr. Malarone not here? I, I really want no, to talk. He's uh, been missing. Running a, running a grocery store at the age of 15 is real hard. and I've, I've been talking to him for a, a, once a week for about four months now. Oh, so he's a psychiatrist. I thought he was a physician. Oh, he... He's a doctor of sorts, I told you, Jack. He's a mysterious man. Yeah, right. If, if he's not a psychiatrist, then he sure is good at pretending, because I feel so much better. I, I leaned up against the bookcase to, to get a better thought about that, when suddenly I heard a click. <laughs> into the dark chamber behind the bookshelf. Well, goodness, I clean these once a week on Wednesday, and that's never happened. Oh, there's a second door. <laughs> Let me just open this one up. Hmm, another chamber. I never saw this when I was hanging around my dad's office. Maybe this is something to do with where your dad went. Way cool. Well, if Dr. Mulerone isn't here, I'll just leave, because I can't really handle the, the stress of of a chain. That's probably for the best, Clive. I lit my cigarette and made my way into if the dirt. We need some tomato paste or some Henderson's hammers. You remember those? <laughs> <laughs> Come on through. The paste is thick and the hammers are strong. <laughs> well, Patricia, why don't you stay here with the butler and me and Toby will go. Oh, another door. Go through here. Toby, I'll see you at school. Okay, bye, nope. Clive. Uh, uh, I have cases to clean anyway. We made our way into the strange cellar. The stairwells were going down in a spiral fashion. Every sign in this place made me think that it hadn't been used in years, but for some reason I had the feeling something was here. <laughs> what? What? I feel like my dad's been hiding some kind of personality from me I've never seen before. Hmm. The only way to find out is to go further down these spooky staircases. <laughs> I'm scared, 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 scared. We continued down the staircases, our feet echoing as we went. I'm a growing boy. <laughs> when we reached the bottom, we came into a big open chamber. We must have been at least 100 or 200 feet below the house. <laughs> It was dark. There was a single candle lit on an altar ahead of us. This doesn't look good, Toby. Looks like your father might have been into something real suspicious. Come on, Jack. You gotta find him. I'm growing hair by the minute. <laughs> As we entered the dark chamber, we heard 
Somebody pour a drink. I can have a drink. <laughs> Anyone there? Soul Mondays, one leg, this way, two, three, one. This is the day of mercy. It's kind of catchy. <laughs> Toby, do you hear that? Stay down. Oh, yeah, I was doing it too. Oh. <laughs> we stuck to the dark as we crept our way in. We got. Closer when suddenly a knife flew through in the darkness, just barely missing Toby. <laughs> Who's there? I reached for my gun, but it wasn't there. It's cool, I brought mine. <laughs> <laughs> Toby pulled out his shotgun. <laughs> Here you take it, you're a man. You are trespassing on sacred ground. Sacred ground. Sacred ground. Sacred ground. Calm down, okay. <laughs> a bunch of people faded in from the edge of the darkness, all of them wearing black hoods. Trespassers. 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 Okay. Break your and enter. Have you guys, uh, have you guys right, seen right, right. my dad? We're here from Dr. Malarone. There are no fathers. What? There's only so. <laughs> we are all sons of the same father. Our identities cast. I'm and never gonna get a date at this rate. Wait, Toby, Toby, stay near me. Look, you see that symbol on that chest? It's yeah. a little tiny brain inside of a really big head. What could oh. that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my dad dealt with brain surgery. They slowly creeped closer. Their hands inside their dark cloaks. The interlopers have seen too much of pareidolia. Oh. They must be expunged. I like where this expunged. is going. <laughs> it's expunged. 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 They circle around us. Expunged. Expunged. I'm a virgin. Expunged. <laughs> we were completely surrounded. We weren't sure how we were going to get out of this. Grab them with your fingers. <laughs> Toby held up his shotgun. The only thing keeping them away from us. Whoa! <laughs> Toby, whoa! <laughs> whoa! The room went dark. Toby fired some buckshot into whoa, the dark. Where, 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 where am I? Whoa, where am I? Whoa. I've gotten into it now. Where am I? Why? Mr. Mr. Jackson told me. We felt some ropes wrap around us. Toby got disarmed. We tried to escape, but we couldn't. Uh, Jackson! I, I felt a bag go over my head. Toby, it's you! Clive? Jack! I fell down a chute. I was trying to get out of the house. I took a wrong turn. <laughs> Throw the three interlopers into our prison brig. Prison brig. Prison, prison brig. brig. We got thrown into the prison. The door closed behind us. Oh, Jack, if I ever, if I never get out of here, I just want you to know I was kidding about that virgin thing. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm totally not a virgin, too. <laughs> Listen, Clive, Toby, we really need to focus. Can okay. any, do any of you feel anything? Do you have, I'm still tied up with the bag on my head. I, I can't reach anything. I'm going to be honest, I'm always feeling something, you know? <laughs> I've, uh, I've got all of the, uh, the normal tools of a of a 15 year old grocery store manager. I've got a box. I've got a box cutter. I've got I've got some Thompson's tomato paste. I I always keep a can on me. Good, good. No, we can use these. I don't know about you, but I'm tied around the around the uh, the shoulders, so I'm gonna need that box cutter. Why don't you slide it over here towards my voice? Oh, well, that's gonna be real hard because I'm tied by the hands. That's where you normally tie someone. <laughs> you know, Greg, so the you didn't tie the man by the shoulders again, did you? It seemed good in practice. Ah, oh, crap, Greg. Practice. Over to you. The box cutter's in my right pocket, but don't, but just, don't, don't go looking around. I'm not trying, Clyde. I'm not trying, alright? Here you go. I cut you free, Jackson. The ropes fell from around my shoulders. I, 
I grabbed them and wrapped them around. They might come in handy. It looked like I had been disarmed even further. I didn't have my secondary boot gun. <laughs> well, let's see that Thompson's tomato paste. Maybe we can use that to right. get through this door. That's right, so in my left pocket. Again, please don't go looking around. Just, just get the paste. I grabbed the paste out of his pocket, and I untied it. We moved over and listened no, to please, the door. No, please, I don't want to keep going. I, I've been clear. I don't want to be part all right, of it. Alright, alright, I get it, Clive. Tie me up. Leave me here. We listened at the door. It sounded like there was at least one guard outside. This might be a chance to get more information on what happened to Dr. Malarone. The yeah. hour of Paradolia is at hand. Paradolia. Paradolia. they would give me more information instead of just peeking the audio. Jackson, I'm starting to think if my dad was a part of this, maybe they'd let us go if they knew that I was his son. That's, that's not a bad idea, but we don't want to put all our cards on the table right now. All right. Maybe. Vice Admiral Malarone, <laughs> it is your duty to interrogate the prisoners. <gasps> Toby, it sounds like your father's working for these Paradolia people. Daddy! Daddy! Quick, everyone, act like you're tied up again. Uh, I, I, I guess sure, it, it. I sure can't move. I guess it is my uh, duty, huh? <laughs> I should have looked at the calendar. It is. Ah, boy. It's Wednesday. Oh, that's my interrogation day. Daddy, it's right. me, Tobes. Huh? The door opened up. Tobes. The sound of my own flesh and blood. It was him. Toby, Toby, Bobby, what are you doing here? Daddy, Daddy, I'm so scared. You can't look at me. What is happening? Look, it's just me and the guys, you know, playing poker. We're just, we're just having a few cold ones, playing some poker. Nothing. You just Daddy, gotta go I'm, back up. I'm one of the guys. You never invited me to be in this weird cult. Toby, I just, I guess now's a good time as any to tell you about our family history. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Please, oh. just go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't read up about it in the library? There's a lot of books about it up in the library. Oh, well, you know us, Larones. Well, it's, we've been tied. We've been tied as long as our great, my great grandpappy came to this country. He fought. You know, he was a good man. <laughs> but we've been we've been tied up in some shady business as long as our family's been around. We've been a part of this cult. The uh, the robes. You know, see, it's because they wear robes. That's why they're called the robes. I, just, I didn't want you to find out this way, Toby. I wanted you to live a normal life. Go play baseball in Wisconsin. Yes, I was you know? looking forward to you going to the prom, too. I didn't Patricia. want you to find out, Toby. Patricia, it's guy Mom. time, Patricia. <laughs> guy time. I, I always clean the bookcases on Wednesday when you do this so that Toby wouldn't find out. Patricia I pulled feel. out one of those bendy, curvy daggers and started making towards me. I guess... I, the guy in the hat, we gotta, we gotta kill you, man. I mean, I'm what? so sorry, I, yeah. you're handsome, man. Doctor Malarone, I'm sorry that I'm here. I hey, just wanted... did you, did you journal? Have you been journaling? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've been, I, I've been writing down what all my dreams are. Uh, nice. Last week, what a swift slash la, last, internet. Last, that's all it'll take. Last here. Thursday, I dreamed that I was naked at school. It was real embarrassing. Oh, that's that's a... so weird. I had that dream too. Oh, oh. man. About and you though. Any last years. words? Patricia grabbed me and dragged me out, throwing me on top of the altar with surprising force. And then, uh, ah, that's ah, my gal. I crashed onto the altar, much like a car would crash. <laughs> and then uh, last Friday, uh -huh, I uh -huh. dreamed that we were all out of Thompson's tomato The cult face. started circling around me. Every, everybody got real mad. Oh, sounds, oh, sorry, I got a chat with these guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to think of something quick to get out of this one. Paradolia is soon upon us. Paradolia. And the veil of illusion that clouds this nation will be pulled back, and it will be seen for what it truly is. Uncle, Uncle Frank? Is that you? To Toby? Uncle Frank? <laughs> Toby, how are you, boy? Oh my god, it's my whole family. And I hope you've been anymore. having your Flintstones vitamins <laughs> and your tomato paste. I have, Uncle Frank. I have. Okay, well, that's, we're gonna sacrifice this man to Pareidolia. So. That's it. That's what I remembered. The Thompson's tomato paste. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> I slipped it into my coat while they were talking to each other. No, right I, where a knife would stab. I, I, <laughs> I have very weak hands, so I'm going to try as hard as I can, but 
really any amount of small aluminum or metal would probably stop this. Here we go. I sacrifice this man in the name of Paradolia. Paradolia. The knife bit into the can. Oh, yeah, I'm so right. tired. <laughs> Look at that blood. So, so, so thick. That blood is thick. That's some real thick blood. <laughs> Mm. Oh, sir, you gotta, oh. drink, you gotta drink more water. Well, you're dead, I guess, but... <laughs> they grabbed... They grabbed my pretend lifeless body and carried me away. Leaving Toby with his father. Damn. I'd have to free that kid. He was a good kid, and I wouldn't let him get suckered into this. And you. Clive, too, if I had time. I wanted, I wanted to wait till your 17th birthday, but I got you your own robe, Toby. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? It's so beautiful. Oh. Look, it's got it's got it little traditions. toaster written on the back. Oh, dear. I tried to keep my eyes closed. <laughs> he had he had his name written on the back of his anonymous cultist robe. Daddy, all I've ever wanted is for you to show me how to be a man, and you know, today I think you have. Oh, all you need to do is pick your robe number. <laughs> <laughs> now we will sew onto the back of your robe. I mean, what's taken? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's... I heard a car door open. I had to keep my eyes closed or else they'd know I wasn't dead. They threw me in the back of some kind of truck. Yep. Hey, hey, I would... Please don't take me where you're taking this dead man. Just please take me to my grocery store. I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to be... Daddy, where are they going? Well, they got to go to the... You know, get cremated. <laughs> Their voices where? faded into the distance as we drove away. I was sitting in the back of this truck, laying down, doing my best to pretend I was dead. But I snuck a peek every once in a while. We were on the mountainous outskirts of Dock City, please. heading towards the river. Please, sirs, please just take me, just take me to, 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 to the Clive grocery store, the Clive family grocery store. That depends, Clive. How much tomato paste do you have left? <laughs> Not on me, sir, but our stock room is... Then to the crematorium. No, please, sir! Our stock room is literally nothing but tomato paste and hammers. I'll give you it all. Every tomato, every hammer. <laughs> you can have it all. Portable deep fryers. I got it all, baby. We, we arrived at the crematorium just next to the river outside of Dock City. The truck stopped and he threw me over his shoulder as we made our way inside. It was the morgue. Doc City morgue. Then I looked up. On the side of the morgue there was a sigil. A big head with a tiny brain in it. How, up, how high up did this go? He carried me into the furnace room. Get these bodies prepped. I want these men burned. And then throw their ashes in the river in the name of Paradolia. Oh, Paradolia! Wow, oh, there's so many of them in here! You, you mean you're gonna burn me alive? You didn't kill me like you killed the other guy. I'm alive! <laughs> this so is true. Paradolia! I left my curvy, twisty knife back at the base. <laughs> you. If you were going to cremate me, kill me first. Please. I think the cremation will take care of that. No! Come on! <laughs> what? This is for you, Jackson. <laughs> the side of the building lit up with machine gun fire. Holy shit. Ah, fuck. I just had to run home real quick and grab my helicopter. Okay, here we go. <laughs> It was Toby! He was flying by in a helicopter, shooting at the side of the building! I'd be really worried if we weren't, like, five rooms deep into the morgue about these bullets. <laughs> I'll get to you. I'm burning it! I'm burning it slowly through. This was my chance. The, some of the, the Paradolia cults ran out of the building. Jackson! Woo! Jackson, I know you're alive. I know what. I know Thompson's tomato paste when I see it. <laughs> Come on, you gotta get me out of here, man. You're an adult. You do this stuff. Don't worry, Clive. I stood up and pulled the dagger out of the tomato oh, paste can. Paradolia, damn it, he's alive. <laughs> That's right. I grabbed him by the scruff of his. Ah, 
and gave him what for? Ah, oh, my floor! <laughs> Take that! Oh. oh, God, my insides. Oh, my oh, God, is, the They're as thick as, tom- as tomato paste. Oh. Ah. That's for trying to burn me. I threw him on the ground and closed the door. Hey, that's not nice. And locked it. Oh, no. (laughs) Quick, Clive. We're going to have to get out there and get to Toby. He's going to be the only way we're going to get out of this I'm going to be real honest with you, Jackson. We're about six blocks away from Clive Groceries. I'm, I'm, I'm out, man. I'm gone. If you, if you run out of this building, they're going to spot you. Quick, hurry. Just stick next to me. We made our way to the stairs and started climbing up. <clears throat> Once we got to the roof, we could see the river below, a few hundred feet down. Toby was holding him off with machine gun fire. Grab on, my dudes. Charge the plane. (laughs) (laughs) Continue charging. Does Toby know that he's shooting his uncle? (laughs) You know, guys, all this violence is making me feel like a man. (laughs) We ran to the edge of the building. Some of the cultists in robes chasing behind us. Just barely out of reach. Quick. gonna jump, Clive. Here we go. Ready? One. One tomato paste. (laughs) Two. Tomato paste. (laughs) Three. (laughs) I got you. We jumped and rolled, landing in the side of Toby's helicopter. Wow, those guys are manly. (laughs) That was neat. The helicopter took off into the air. We, We hit the floor, able to finally breathe a sigh of relief. Very clutch, Jackson. I want to thank you for being a father figure to me. Are you... Toby, you Toby? Toby seems so different, Yeah. Toby. Well, you've turned me into a man now. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to be a man. You know... <laughs> you know what we have to do, Toby. We've got to get to the Dock City police and let them know what's going on with this paradelia or whatever. Damn right. But first... Let's have some scotch. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing says fly a helicopter with a 14-year-old boy like drinking some scotch. Like, I'm just going to grab this parachute and, and, and I'm just going to go towards the grocery store, okay? I'll see, I'll see you in school, Toby. I, I gotta go, man. I'm about to lose my fucking mind. I ain't got time for school anymore, Clyde. I'll see you around. He took a shot of scotch. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye. <laughs> Wee. He jumped out of the helicopter and descended slowly towards the towards his grocery store. Uh, there's the there's the police station right there, the one with the spotlights. All Just right. take us down on the roof, the the big H there. Taking her down. Well, you're going, you're getting a little wobbly there. <coughs> Don't worry, it's my first time drinking and driving. <laughs> <laughs> Unidentified aircraft. Make yourself identify. Ah uh, shit! I can't. I don't even have my license yet. <laughs> what? <coughs> don't worry. I'll take care of this. I know the sergeant. Just take us down. All right. Unidentified. Wait a minute. I think that's Jack Jackson. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. Clear the helipad. He's gonna land. We're bringing it down. Oh. <laughs> Surprisingly good, kid. For a 14 year old with no license and a helicopter who just had alcohol. What can I say? Getting your whole family killed does that to a boy. <laughs> yeah, we stepped out of the helicopter. You want Sergeant. to explain what this is all about there, Jack? Sergeant O'Hare, no need to worry. I got, a, I got something big to blow the lid off of this town like a. Head. <laughs> I hope that thing that you have to show me is a little bit more important than a drunk 14 year old flying a helicopter in the dead of night. It sure is. Why don't we go down to your office? We made our way into his office, closed the frosted doors. He sat down behind his large mahogany desk. Listen, O'Hare, have you ever heard of. 
Uh, paradilia? <laughs> Paradolia? Paradolia? Have you ever heard that word before? Wait, uh, how'd you know? That word. It's a... Tis a common thing for <laughs> brains to talk of with a saying. I don't know if I can Jack? trust this guy, Jack. Something about him's weird. I thought that too. Something about the sergeant was strange. His eyes were, were drifty, like he wasn't fully focused. Almost like a man that was... Uh, uh, look, Jack, how about I, I look the other way this time, and, and you go about your business? Well, it's important that we, we expose this cult that's here in Dark City. The cult? I have ears and eyes all around the city, and I've never heard of no cult. You're talking nonsense, Jack. I know that the Malarone family has given lots to this city, but that money is laced in cult blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one moment. I have to get that. He picked up a phone. Hello? Oh, I scooched a little closer, trying my best to hear in. Jackson. <laughs> oh, the, the mayor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll let him know. <clears throat> Goodbye. Jackson, I don't think his accent is real. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> you are in my office after all. There's almost no way for you to whisper. I he leans whisper. forward on the desk. <laughs> Looks like the mayor wants to talk to you, Jack. Is that so? He does. And he just so happens to want to talk to me right when I'm about to expose this whole thing, huh? <laughs> Hmm. See, that didn't seem real. <laughs> <laughs> Just get out of my office, Jack. All right. Before I have you thrown in jail for being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Big old meanie pants, as my daughter says. <laughs> we made our way out of the office. <laughs> old poopy brain meanie pants. <laughs> That's we, what my daughter says. <laughs> he walked to the doorway and yelled at us as we walked down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was it. <laughs> we headed outside. There was a car waiting for us. Black tinted windows. Me and Toby climbed inside and we zoomed away. It was a limo. One of those ones where the seats on one side are facing the ones on the other. On the other side, the mayor. Jackson? Mr. Mayor! I need you to let this one go. I'm sorry. Let what one go, Mr. Mayor? Whatever it is you're looking into, Jackson, it's too big. I looked at Toby. I don't think I can do that, Mr. Mayor. This seems like a... This seems like a pretty open and shut case. You don't believe me? Maybe you'll listen to your arch enemy, Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg. Oh my god, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. A TV came up out of the center console. Rube Goldberg, he's my arch nemesis, my Moriarty to my Sherlock Holmes. He... Hey, ho there, Jackie boy. <laughs> Go ahead and look into the very large camera, okay? I want to be able to see you. If Goldberg's scared of them, then you should be scared. Oh boy, howdy, am I scared of those peckers? <laughs> Rube Goldberg was a mastermind, a criminal not worth messing with. What is this, Goldberg? What did I stumble into? The oldest ancient secret society known to mankind. A bunch of people in cloaks with squir squirrely knives? Robes, to be more precise, buddy. And uh, colloquially among themselves, they call them the robes, but... <laughs> what did, you, with, what did with... you do with my daddy? <laughs> more Rudy. like, what did your daddy do with you? Raising you... About 200 feet above their lair. <laughs> Look, you two. You're only see eye to eye. You're on the opposite sides. But we don't want this group taking over Doc City. So you're going to have to put aside your differences and work together for... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that was a tough call. Rube Goldberg was responsible for many of the crimes I had been involved in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, involved in solving. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> well, Goldberg, I'm game if you are. I'm gonna. I'm here to save Doc City. That's not your. You're your what? You're what? 
I'm gonna save you're Dawson. What? You're, I'm gonna save. You're blank. You're what? If I am, you're what? I'm game. You're what? Game. Game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> a mastermind, truly an evil mastermind. <laughs> Just tease him, buddy. He painted me right into a corner. He was always two steps ahead in his chess game. I see the way you look at me. Anyway, we'll go ahead and work together on this one. Then why don't you come out of hiding, Goldberg? I want to talk to you face to face, not face to camera to face. <laughs> My face is too good for you to see in the same room. The window in the front of the car slid open. Too valuable. But what? <laughs> he was in the driver's seat. Damn it! <laughs> Told you not to hit that button, Roscoe. <laughs> Mayo Roscoe, why don't you take us over to the to the manor, the Malarone Manor? If we're gonna solve this, we're gonna have to do it together and do it fast. Oh, I'm Malarone. That's my house. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to another all new Jack Jackson. Tune in next week to see if Jack and Rube can put aside their differences and stop the people in the robes. Sponsored by Thompson's Tomato Case. Other tomato paste is crap. <laughs> so thick. <laughs> Jack Jackson will return on the first Saturday of the month. Hi, I'm Jeremy Brent, and I just want to thank you for listening to Jack Jack's Noir. This episode is brought to you by CSC Sacramento Theater. We record live there every first Saturday. You can find ticket info at cscsacramento.com. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave us a review on iTunes helps us spread the show around and also we'll release a bonus episode for every 50 reviews we get those episodes will be based on suggestions that you leave in your reviews so it's a way for you folks to get involved lastly if you want to send a message to jack to read in a future segment you can send those over to jack jackson noir at gmail.com thank you so much for listening we will see you next wednesday